and welcome to The Nature of Things. My name is Michaela Quinn, and I will be filling in for David Suzuki. Tonight's special, The Truth is in the Frogs. Frogs are truly amazing species. They are found all over the world and in every continent except Antarctica. And to date, there are over 6,000 species. Frogs make b great bioindicators, um, as their condition of their health is often a response um, to the condition of their surrounding ecosystems. Uh, they are also good at controlling pests um, and help control uh, malaria through uh, consuming mosquitoes. Uh, besides mosquitoes, frogs uh, will eat uh, almost anything that will fit into their mouths, which can include other bugs, spiders, mice, fish, and possibly even other frogs. But one of the most interesting um, attributes of frogs is their permeable skin, which allows them to breathe and take in water through their skin. But sadly, we are finding that frogs are beginning to disappear. And uh, we are finding that one third of all amphibians are considered um, endangered, which is due to the loss of habitat, uh, pollution, and the spread of disease. Stay tuned to find out why. Frogs breathe and drink through their skin, making them susceptible to pollution, agricultural runoff, and acid rain. Fungicides, pesticides, and insecticides have shown to have harmful effects to amphibians and is one of the root causes of the frog decline in the past decade. Studies conducted with European common frogs have shown bone-chilling results in that they can die within an hour of being sprayed by pesticides. Hermaphroditic frogs are also beginning to appear in areas surrounded by industry or urban development, leading to the consensus that a mixture of agriculture runoff and pollution are the culprits. As an example, atrazine, a top-selling weed killer in the United States and across the world, has been found to dramatically affect the sexual development of male frogs, turning them into hermaphrodites, creatures with both male and female organs. This was found at concentrations 30 times lower than those deemed safe by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. If the exposure to pesticides and pollution does not seem bad enough, the increased exposure of ultraviolet radiation and climate change is also playing a role in the declining populations of frogs. Scientists believe this rise in ultraviolet radiation is caused by the thinning of the atmospheric ozone layer. With frogs, it is their eggs that are deemed the worst off, as they have nothing to protect themselves from the harmful UVB rays. This excess exposure to UVB rays can cause embryonic mortality. In addition, UVB rays have the ability to damage DNA within cells, and has been tested to show signs of cancer, mutations, and suppress the immune system. Now we know agricultural, pollution, and UVB rays are key factors in the decline of frogs. There is, however, one more factor to consider, and this is the chytrid fungus. The chytrid fungus was first identified in 1998 and has been detected on at least 287 species of amphibians within 36 countries and has caused amphibian populations to decline in several nations, including Australia, South America, North America, Central America, New Zealand, Europe, and Africa. The chytrid fungus is also most likely responsible for over 100 species extinctions since the 1970s. The spread of this disease is most likely due to human movement around the world and the ability to transport an infected frog either knowingly or unknowingly from one zone to another. Native frogs then within uninfected area typically have no immunity to this pathogen, so when exposed to the fungus it will quickly spread. The fungus attacks the part of the frog skin that has keratin in it. Since frogs use their skin in respiration, this makes it difficult for the frog to breathe. The fungus also damages the nervous system, affecting the frog's behavior. Symptoms of a sick frog may include discolored skin, obvious peeling of the skin, particularly on the feet, or a roughness of the frog's skin that can be barely seen. 
In addition, some symptoms include unusual behavior, having its legs spread slightly away from its body rather than keeping them tucked in close, and in extreme cases, the frog's body will become rigid and it will begin to trail its legs behind it. So the question is, is there a cure to the chytrid fungus? The simple answer is no. The big deterrent for reducing the spread of the chytrid fungus is through humans. Human movement across the globe is now done fluidly and easily. Unfortunately, with this comes negative consequences, and in this case, it is the spread of the chytrid fungus. As a society, we are responsible for the frog decline, but at the same time, we can work together to preserve the world's frogs. Now you can see that the disappearance of frogs is due to a combination of factors. This includes climate change, habitat destruction, pollution, UVB radiation, as well as the harmful chytrid fungus. So the question is, what can you do to help protect frogs in the future? And the answer is just simple things such as driving less, conserving energy, using less harmful substances, and reducing your use of harmful pesticides and herbicides. The other thing you can do is help support scientists and foundations that are looking into how to mitigate the spread of the chytrid disease. Thank you for joining me. I'm your host, Michaela Quinn, signing off.